Okay, hi everyone, Chris Petri here. Uh, thanks for stopping by. Um, we're going to have some fun. We're going to enjoy our uh, watercolors here. We're going to do something interesting. Um, I'm hoping everyone here um, can look up on the internet um, a simple term you can type into the internet um, to do a search for good photographs. So I use um, I use a lot of different, you know, I'll just go onto my uh, a web browser and I'll just type in a term like sun drenched street um, city streets sun drenched city streets now if I type in that phrase sun drenched city streets all these great pho photographs come up so that's what I did before we started here tonight uh, today and so I found some really great pictures On, online the only only problem is sometimes um, you know sometimes photographs are um, put online and they they're owned by other people that put them online so there's copyrights and things like that so what I'll do is I'll just use one of the photographs that I've seen online and just kind of use the idea of the photograph but not really necessarily uh, use the photograph you know as per every detail that's on there um, so now the main thing I want to do here is just explain simply perspective for the scene that I'm going to paint. Basically I'm going to use a piece of printer paper here and just kind of get my uh, bearings here. Okay, that's good there. Okay, good. Okay, so the scene is, is uh, a um, portrait versus a landscape. So the scene is more you know, portrait uh, vertical versus a landscape like this. And it's basically a, a street s scene. And it's got some walls, so there's some like walls and... And then there's uh, a building over here. And then like a walkway through. And then there's some steps here. And there's a wall here. And I guess the steps are... And the steps come down like this. Like, like that. And there's like a window over here. And a couple flower pots on the wall over here. So the main thing I wanted to... Um, convey here is if, if you go and you find a photograph that you like essentially you just the, the, one of the main things for perspective is um, is uh, finding finding the eye level location on your photograph that you're working from so if you're working from that photograph and you find the eye level which might be about here. Then you're set. Because once you find that eye level, all the other angles are just going to star away from that that eye level point. And sometimes this might change. The um, for perspective, if we just make it simple, you have your eye level, and then you have a vanishing point. So in a sense, if you're standing right here and you pretend this is this is your head and these are your shoulders, and you're standing here on these steps, walking up these steps through through this scene, your eyes are here. This will be your eye level. And this would be like your vanishing point here where everything will go towards that center vanishing point. So everything just stars from there. 
So if you can imagine just a star pattern. And these will be all the angles of your walls and windows as you do this. So if you have windows over here, they're going to they're gonna follow these angles, these star angles. So if you have a window, your window is going to follow this pattern of this star. So it's a simple, a simple way of just looking at it without getting too confusing and going into, you know, long explanations of it. Is you, if you just imagine your, your eye level, where you're standing in the scene, whatever scene it is, wherever it is, your eye level is here where your eyes are and you're standing there looking out into the scene. That's your eye level. And your vanishing point is the, the center of your eyes where you're looking. And then everything stars from there. So if you're in a street scene, all your buildings are going to slope up like this, angle up like this. So if you draw a building in the distance here, it's going to angle up this way and follow that star pattern. So that's basically just a simple way to explain it so that when I draw this scene, you're going to understand how I got my angles when I'm contour drawing this. I'm using the star pattern. I don't even know if it's called the star pattern, but that's what I call it. You know, you can call it anything you want. You'd be creative. And then we have it. Okay, now we have some good water paper, watercolor paper here, and let's let's start. And I'll do the same thing. I'm going to get my my rectangle that I'm working in. And we're just going to have some fun here. We're going to get some paint going, some contour drawing going here. And I'm just going to lay out my my scene here. I'll do a preliminary light sketch. And you'll hear me talk about that a lot on my videos. Preliminary light sketch is just getting a super light sketch just to sort of find where things are going to be. So that I don't have, when I go in and do the final drawing, I don't have to, you know, worry too much about where things are. I'm going to kind of have the basic idea. That's my horizon line or my eye level line. Okay, this is pretty good. I have my... I think I have most of my lines here that I need. This is a pretty simple scene. And then maybe there's another... You have to erase a few th things to adjust. You can do that. Okay. The main point here is we're having fun. We're just enjoying ourselves. We're gonna we're gonna pretend we're here at this scene. We don't have a lot of time. We're we're just maybe out doing some sightseeing, and we decide we're gonna do a quick painting for like an hour. So we're not gonna take you know hours and hours and hours to do this. We're gonna try to do it quickly. Try to get the essence of what we're seeing here in this scene. So. I've got pretty much things lightly sketched and now I'm going to go in and just do my final drawing here.
Okay, now we're going to do some uh, Now, if, if you're looking at a scene and you see like a lot of details, you can sometimes just scale back the details on it and say, I see 10 flower pots with flowers. Maybe I'll make like three or four instead of 10. Um, so that's what my approach right now is I'm here at this scene. I've only have, I only have an hour when I'm sightseeing. I want to get down some quick fun sketching and painting. So I'm just going to take a few, um, details from from the scene and not not paint everything and draw everything I see so here I'm going to So we have some flower pots here. I'm looking at these. And again, I can improvise with artwork. Improvising is your best friend. You, you want to make sure that you can um, improvise occasionally. Um, feel free to change things around from what you see. Don't feel locked into like every single detail whenever you're doing a drawing from a photograph or if you're sitting uh, out uh, in, a, in a location in your painting or if you're working from um, books and uh, study books whatever it is do not feel locked into just doing everything exact you know sometimes just for fun just do something different change it around make it easier for yourself I do that a lot I do that a lot I change things around to make it easy for myself when I'm drawing and painting And I'm doing that now. I'm not uh, getting too uh, And sometimes when I'm doing a new drawing from something I've never seen before, it takes me a little more concentration. I'm not talking as much. And... Okay, I'm going to do some more impro improvising here. Okay, great. We've got our drawing done. Contour drawing. I went through the picture. Remember, we got our preliminary sketch done where we did a light sketch, super light sketch, and just got some lines in there to kind of find where we needed to be. We had our horizon line, our eye level line. We got that. From there, the star pattern. So... Everything works off that star pattern, the angles of the buildings, the angles of the flower pots. If there's windows up here, they work off those same angles. Okay, so this is good. So we're, we're pretending we're on a out in a scene on location we don't have much time maybe we're with a group of people and we're just allowed to have an hour to do a drawing and a sketch so we're going to get the essence of what we're seeing here so we're going to get this beautiful sun drenched uh, city street it's like a walkway going through some
maybe some uh, apartments and uh, condominiums or maybe some stores that are through here. And these are white plaster walls and concrete uh, steps and sidewalks going up. I'll get my brush. And I use simple, simple materials and art supplies here. Water bucket, clean water, round brush, sable brush, round Klinsky sable brush. This is a Charles Reed brush. Comes in a set of three brushes. Great. I, I bought a couple sets myself and I always have at least, you know, extra brushes in case uh, um, if, the, if they wear out a little bit, I have extra ones to, to use. And... Um, Paints. Chris Petri, my palette. If you search on YouTube, you'll find all my colors there. Uh, you just type into YouTube, Chris Petri, my palette. You'll, you'll see all my colors. I list them all out, so I'm just going to use the, the same colors that I always use. I use the same palette all the time. Alright, so let's go in here. Let's get some darks. French Ultramarine Blue. Cobalt blue. Okay. And now we have a start. We're getting some good darks in here. Couple splashes. And I'll leave some white of the paper here for the flowers. So some flower pots here. I always go warm, warm and cool everywhere. So I'll go with some uh, yellow ochre. I'll mix, that in, I'll mix that into some of the blue. Burn Sienna. Sap Green. Olive Green. Cadmium, cadmium lemon yellow. Here I'm just making some indications of green, green, and and then for some for some flower pot, you know, the flower pots here, some greens. Then some nice reds for some flowers, some orange. Have fun with this, mix up the colors. Once this dries a little, we can go in and do some more colors. Good enough. Then we're going to try to get this. Uh, Okay, these are the concrete steps. Concrete steps here. So let's get those uh, colors in. And again, I'm going to go fast here. We don't have a ton of time. I know you want to get to painting and drawing and get your painting started. So in the, and so I'm I'm aware of that. You want to get started too and get going. So I'm just going to sort of go quickly here. So I'm just making the steps going back in the distance here. Then I'm going to go in with some blue just so I can change around, change some of the, the
the colors a little bit. I don't want to just have one stagnant color the whole way across. Let's mix in some blues, maybe some greens. Okay, good. So the sunlight is coming down into the scene. It's probably coming towards this way, so it's the light is actually a little bit coming from the right and it's striking this wall over here. But there's a lot of light in this whole scene, so but th the brightest light is on this wall, so we're going to keep this wall white white of the paper. Okay. Let's uh, get some blue in here. And I did a little indication of a flower pot down here in blue, that little rounded shape there. And we have our flower pot up here. Then we can get some a little indication of some green leaves and some stems maybe. A little splash or two. A little bit there. And since we're doing this, we can kind of go around and we'll we'll, we'll sort of, uh, since we're on the idea of doing some of the greens in the flower pots, let's get some, we'll, we'll sort of pick up our pace. We'll say, all right, we know we're going to do some more greens here. Let's, let's just go around and we'll do all of them at the same time. It saves time. We don't have to worry about cleaning our brush as much. Again, if we're here doing a quick scene and we only have an hour to paint, then we've got to be fast in a sense. You know, we can't, let's try to, look like we're trying to do an economy uh, approach here where, all right, we know we're going to do some greens. Well, let's do all of our greens at the same time. It's not going to hurt anything. We don't have to worry about any um, bleeding of the paint and the watercolor because this is all white, clean paper and it's dry. The paper's all dry, so... We don't have to worry about, we can go and do all our greens at one time like this, and it won't be a problem. Of course, if your paper is wet in certain sections, then you always have to be aware um, that you, you have to be you know, more careful when you're doing some additional uh, painting around your painting. But for here, we're good. We're, we're I'll go with some cerulean here. So I'm going to change my blues a little bit. We'll go with some cerulean here. Uh, maybe we'll do some uh, little co different colors. Have fun with your colors. Use different colors. I tend to try to, uh, once in a while, introduce a new color into my palette if I can. And um, we're going to do some darks here. So when you mix darks, you can always go with your Burnt Umber, French Ultramarine Blue, and a little bit of Alizarin Crimson, and that makes a great dark. So I'm going to make a window over here. We'll make that a dark there. Maybe over here we'll do the same thing. We'll make a dark for the window. Okay, here's a dark, some shadow.
and some more greens. There's some uh, plants along this wall. And I'm going to go into my reds and we'll do some cadmium red, some alizarin crimson here. That's my colors I'm using. Um, it's cadmium orange, so we'll use some orange here. I guess the point is, like, let's use lots of color. It's, it's a uh, summery scene, bright light. A uh, sun-drenched scene here, so let's make it a sunny summer type picture where you know there's lots of flowers and uh, lots of sunlight. And some more flower pots here. And we can make some shadows here and there. Just a little tiny bit of shadow. It seems like the sun's coming from straight over top, so the shadows would be very minimal here. Like we wouldn't be going with long shadows anywhere. It's when the sun is up high. If you can always remember, when the sun is up very high and shining straight down, the shadows are very small. And then at the end of the day or the beginning of the day, when the sun is shining from the lower uh, horizons, the shadows become longer. So for here, we're just going to stay with... We're going to stay with um, small shadows and and I hope this is looking good. I, I hope you'll recall that I'm trying to do this fast as if, if I'm out in the field and I only have a short amount of time to work. I'm going to try to be quick about things and so I'm hoping that we can do that. I'm doing some shadowing now. There was some uh, details on the building here. A little bit of shadow there. Um, let's get some sky in. Cobalt blue. All right, some good sky color there. Just a little indication. Now we can take a little bit of this uh, mixture which we had, which was um, burnt umber, French ultramarine blue, and a little bit of lizard and crimson, which makes a purple color, a grayish color. We can use this to make some shadows over here. So we'll wash on some shadows over here. And we can make a little line on that wall there. Okay, then we're going to go with some warmer color. Let's go with some, a little bit of the uh, yellow ochre. Shadowy colors too as well over here a little bit. Then over here, we're going to keep this mostly white but a tiny bit of uh, cad lemon yellow. That gives a really bright sun feel. Sunny feeling of really warm, hot sun on that, on that wall there. So there we go, we got some of that cadmium lemon yellow. Then again, we're gonna put some shadow on this part. All right. 
we're back and we're we're getting started again here. Um, we just had a quick blip in the um, the video here, but we're going to continue on and um, basically we're finalizing our picture. We're trying to get our our tonal values correct according to the um, light of this picture. Um, it's a very bright, sunny feel to this painting. It's a maybe like, you know, uh, noontime. The sun is up high in the sky. It's coming down this way, straight down from above the sunlight. It's striking this wall over here in particular more than it is on this side. So these walls over here are more in shadow. So we're going to try to get that feel and, and continue to try to really finish up our... our our uh, painting and this would be we're in the mindset of being in the field or maybe uh, we have an hour to draw and paint something in the field we're, we're on a um, uh, perhaps we're on some sort of um, tour and we only have an hour to paint draw and paint our, our scene that we want to do so we sit down in our chair with our um, paints and our pencil and our brushes and we're gonna do this uh, so that's the mindset we had when we're doing this painting right now. So pretty much we're we're finishing up now, and we're just going to try to get our last bit of um, accurate uh, shadowing and and light in the in this painting. So I noticed that I need some uh, some more. Uh, shadow on this side uh, mixing some sky color in there Then I'm going to go down here to this part of the wall. I'm going to go with a little darker bit of sky here. Cobalt blue. I'm leaving some of those cloud colors. A little more shadow on this wall here. There's some shadow on this wall as well, back here. And this looks like it's in shadow. Quite a bit of uh, And what's fun about shadows is they sometimes, you know, they have interesting hit and, hit and miss type feels to them. Shadows sometimes, you know, they, they're mysterious, you know, there's something in the, in the picture that we don't see that's outside the picture, that's th putting shadows onto things. So you can have fun and be really creative with shadows. Think about that when you're... Um, when you're painting shadows, have some fun with them. Once in a while, you know, artists, you'll see them a lot. They'll, they'll sometimes push large shadows right in the fr front of their pictures. 
So they're in this essence, they're pretending there's like a large tree or a large building or something else in the scene that we can't see. And it's putting a shadow across the ground or something like that. So, or on a wall or the main thing is you can have fun with shadows and be creative. The only thing that you have to keep in mind is you want to try to follow the rule of where your, your light source is coming from. So when you do, if you do want to make a mysterious shadow or create something that might be maybe a little mysterious and fun that you're creating, you just want to try to maintain the, um, the discipline of remembering where your light is coming from. And we said it's coming from the straight top of this scene down onto this scene. And it's sort of coming from the right side a little bit this way. So it's mostly the bright sunlight is uh, hitting this wall here and reflecting and making it bright inside this whole a walkway going through this scene so that's why this wall over here is pretty bright and pretty it's got a lot of brightness to it and then this wall over here is more in shadow but if you want to get creative and add shadows to some steps or another part of the wall you can do that um, it's um, just a matter of sort of envisioning the light coming down from above into the scene and just trying to sort of figure in your mind where that sh where those shadowing patterns would be so if you stick with what you see in the photographs, you're much better off. But again, once you get the feel for shadows, then you can kind of add in some uh, creative uh, shadows here and there if you want. And I do that occasionally. I'll just add a shadow or two that might not be um, in the actual photograph, but I'll try to be a little more creative. So, you know, feel free to do that once in a while. Just It's always good to um, just double check things and see if it makes sense first and and then uh, fire it in all right so we have our shadows over here and then you can make some darker darker spots here and there. This is a little I'm just using a touch of that color for the concrete on the top here. So I just add a little more water and just reactivate that paint there. A little more shadow over here on this wall, this area. And I add a little bit of that cadmium orange just to change up the tonal value of this and the color. And then we can go with some more French ultramarine blue. Burnt Umber, Lizard and Crimson. We'll just mix around some, uh, and I'll make a window up here.
And there's some red that I see in the photograph underneath the um, planters. So the bottom of the uh, flower pots along these walls here are red. That makes some good color. Then we can add some shadowing too, a little more shadowing uh, along this here. That's a little bit of uh, yellow ochre. Blue. Then we can go with um, some more French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, lizard and crimson. And then maybe we'll just do uh, you know, some indications of some uh, shutters. Some shadowing underneath the shutters a little bit. We could let those shutters dry and maybe add some color to them. Maybe make them like an orange or a red. That would probably look pretty good. So you can have you know create you can be creative with your colors. And this looks pretty good. And then a little bit of shadowing under these flower pots here. And I do these really fast, just, you know, little indications. Here as well, a little bit of extra shadowing just to and then we could take some more color straight out of the tube, some nice reds and uh, so we could Put some color in the flowers here. A little bit of splashing here maybe. If you have some splashing that doesn't go exactly correct, no problem. You just Blot it up with a tissue. If you see you went over a little too much on the boundaries or something, you can blot up a few spots.
Okay, that's looking pretty good. All right, great. Plenty of uh, plenty of good color. Okay, so here the main goal was to um, pretend we're out, we're having fun, we're uh, doing some sketching, some painting out in the field. We happen to um, get a spot where we can paint for about an hour, and then we just, you know, we have to be, you know, fast about it. We can't take forever, so we try to, and I'm using a little bit of titanium white just to try to get a little bit of uh, a couple uh, lines here and there. So I'm just trying to get a, uh, make a little bit of an interesting uh, So sometimes you can use a little white, a little bit of uh, white with um, titanium white, just to um, if you have a problem with something, you know, you can add a little bit of white to it if it's too much. Uh, okay, and then. Uh, Okay, we're looking uh, good here. We have a fun, quick painting that we did on location, we're pretending. Let's zoom in, see if we can zoom in a little bit to this. So that looks pretty good. It's, um, we followed our star pattern again to get our angles correct with perspective to get the angles of the roofs of the buildings, the uh, windows, the flower pots, the stairs. And once we get those angles correct using perspective, um, we just remembered we wanted to make sure we remember where the light is. The light is coming from the top of the scene, down. Most of the light is coming a little bit from the right, but it's pretty much straight up ahead, like straight over top. So we're pre pretending it's like noon time. So the sun's straight up overhead in the sky, and it's shining down, and it's a little bit to the right, so it's coming down. It's, it's hitting this wall mostly, so this wall is the brightest wall, pure white paper, with maybe a little touch of a cadmium lemon yellow. And then this wall over here is getting that reflected light, but we have a little bit of shadow on this wall. And then, of course, this over here is in shadow, this side of the building a little more so we have some more shadow but a lot of bouncing bright light in this scene so uh, hope you'll try this try it once try it a couple times um, have fun with it lots of beautiful pure color we use the uh, straight out of the tube colors here for our flowers we use straight color right out of the tube right out of the palette here for our flower pots for some of the colors in our shutters. So we had um, an easy time of things. We didn't have to worry about mixing too much color. We just went straight right into the palette with the fresh, moist uh, paint. All right, we'll see you next time. Have a great time painting, have fun, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.